If you're a field service engineer or you're interested about becoming one, knowing a little bit more about the travel aspect of the job, you're going to want to watch this video. In this video, I'll talk about some helpful tips that are going to help you be successful when it comes to travel. We're primarily going to focus on airlines, rental car companies, and hotel chains. Welcome back to Untitled Label, where we start with greatness through optimization. I'm John, I'm a field service engineer, and on this channel, we talk about all things relating to being a field service engineer. As a field service engineer, travel is going to be a part of the job. So making sure you choose the right uh, companies that are gonna be good for you is gonna be essential for going forward with this career. So the first thing we'll discuss is going to be focusing and choosing a airline. So you're gonna have plenty of options based on where you live at. Depending on the travel aspect of the job, you may need to be close to an airport. Um, if that is the case, you're going to wanna see what your local hub is. By that, I mean the main airline that flies out of your local airport. There's gonna be one airline that has a lot of flights primarily coming from that airport. For me, being in Houston, my local airline or air hub is going to be United. It made the most sense for me to primarily fly United as they have the most direct flights coming out of Texas. One thing I hate is using up time to deal with layovers. So flying United out of Houston, out of Texas, it makes it more convenient because a lot of their flights that they have to the places where I need to go are direct flights. So take the little bit of time that there is, or next time you're at the airport, take a look around and see what the primary airline is. They're gonna have a lot more flights compared to the other uh, airline companies. That's probably gonna be the airline you wanna go with. Once you've done your research and you've found your airline, you're going to wanna use that airline as often as possible. Reason being, over time, you're gonna build up points, which is going to help you when it comes to maybe taking a vacation or maybe traveling for leisure. You wanna be able to stack up these points so whenever that time comes, you're paying a little less or nothing at all out of pocket. A lot of times too, with airline loyalty, you might have free check bags, which is kinda of convenient when you have a lot of luggage. Everyone loves free upgrades as well. Eventually, you'll start getting free upgrades to first class, so pick an airline, Show that loyalty, build up those points, and just reap the rewards from doing that. Another thing you're going to want to pay attention to is the parking situation of the airport. I know for me, being a veteran and in Texas, one of the things that I am able to do is get free veteran parking um, if my vehicle has a uh, disabled veteran tag. So with that, I'm able to get free airport parking. Now, this is especially convenient because you know how expensive airport parking can be. Hopefully, your company is going to appreciate the fact that you're able to save them a couple bucks from parking based on being a veteran. Now, I do understand not everyone's going to have that option, but taking into account and considering the parking situation at your airport is still important. Oftentimes, we have to travel on the dime, travel out of the blue, and you have to pay attention to when parking is going to be available or if you gotta take a shuttle to get to the airport. So keep that in mind and take that into account when you're traveling. Personally, for me, whenever it comes to the airline, I choose to fly United. This is again because United has the biggest hub when it comes to the airport that's closest to me. I've also kinda dabbled with other airlines and to be honest, United has been my favorite. American, I've had issues with them when it comes to delayed flights, canceled flights, or even my baggage getting lost. So I don't really like American, that's my last option. My backup for now is usually Delta. So pick a primary and have another one as a backup that you do like as well. If you're getting value from this video and you are actually finding this helpful, make sure to subscribe. Uh, if you also would like to share this video, it'll help the channel grow as well. Oh, and make sure to check out Batmain on Instagram. Our next focus is going to be rental cars. Now, rental cars you're going to need to get around town, especially when you're out of town. So whenever it comes to rental cars, one thing that I have noticed I do want to share with you guys is that it kind of varies on where you're at. I've noticed that based on cost, 
on the West Coast, your probably best option might be Hertz or Avis. Versus on the East Coast, your best options may be Enterprise or National based on cost. So in general, for me, I usually use Enterprise for my rental company. I have a backup as Hertz because they do have some electric vehicle options, which I did have the opportunity to take advantage of. So if you're someone that's interested in electric vehicles, perhaps, Hertz is definitely going to be the rental company you want to consider as they do have plenty of um, electric vehicles that are available. Now, keep in mind, this is going to be kind of important based on where you're at. Just like I previously mentioned, depending on whether you're on the West Coast, East Coast, or even maybe Central in Texas, for example, um, those rental car prices may vary. Your company may have a limit as to how much you can spend a day on a rental car. So take that into account and pick the company that's best for you, but take into account where you're gonna be traveling to and if those prices are gonna be within range for your company that you work for. Customer service too is extremely important when it comes to rental car companies because you want a car company that's gonna be at the end of the day, looking out for you. You want a car that's gonna be reliable, no issues, and you can kinda of come and go. Pay attention to lines when you're at the airport. Certain uh, rental car companies have longer lines based on where you're at. So if you're someone that wants to grab a vehicle and be out of there really quick before you know lines start forming, pay attention to what companies have lines based on the airline you're flying from. This is one thing that I do just to make sure I'm picking companies that don't necessarily have a long line every time I fly into town. One of the things I don't wanna waste my time on is waiting in line. And pro tip for those that are just starting out um, in this industry, if you are using a rental car, one thing to kinda, you know, insurance per se, as you're walking around inspecting the vehicle, just record, uh, take a video or pictures of what you see. It's probably just better to record your walk around of the, of the car. That way, in case anything should happen, let's say one of the attendants messes up the car and all of a sudden they're trying to find you for something that didn't happen while you had the vehicle. You literally have video proof of your walk around of the vehicle. So that's going to come in as great insurance when it comes to dealing with anything like that should you have to. So it only takes a couple, maybe 15, 30 seconds max to just walk around, pull out the phone, record your walk around of the vehicle, and that gives you the peace of mind. Last but not least, we're gonna discuss hotel chains. You're going to be traveling, you're gonna be staying in new cities, there's gonna be hotel accommodations that are gonna be necessary. For me, I personally like Marriott. Reason being, M, of course, just kidding. Um, Marriott for me is kind of better than Hilton. I started out using Hilton chain and then over time I started to notice that I prefer Marriott based on the types of hotels that they had. Their hotels were more modern. They had more amenities uh, per se, depending on where you're at. But I really like uh, that a lot of their hotels, especially depending on where I was staying at, a lot of them were a little bit more modern and new. So that's one thing that I kind of you know, took into account. I like things that are new. I don't like old style stuff. So being able to stay in newer hotels for me was important because it felt more at home. Uh, I have a new home and I want it to be like I'm at home. So just that little bit of nuance for me made a big difference. Obviously, you still have to keep in mind the prices of each hotel. Each hotel chains has different types of uh, I guess, tiers for their hotels. So paying attention to that is going to help you make a good decision for the hotel chain you wanna use. And just like we talked about, just like airlines, you're going to have points and loyalty uh, rewards for being a hotel chain member. Um, this can be late checkout, free upgrades, extra points when you check in, the list can go on and on. So pick a good hotel chain that you like that is useful to you based on where you are or where you travel and stick with them as much as possible so you can earn some free nights in the long run. 
One thing I wanted to throw into this uh, for those that may be veterans interested in being field service engineers or already are field service engineers, make sure to check out the LinkedIn group, Veterans and Field Service Engineering. This is a great community of veterans that are also field service engineers. Uh, you can network with these people, get ideas, get more information, and possibly even find a job. If you enjoyed this video, I'd be curious to know what airline you guys use, rental car companies you guys use, as well as hotel chains. I'm always trying to figure out which one might be the best out there. I think my combo of United, Enterprise, and Marriott is the best, but I could be wrong. Let me know what you're using down below. Now, with that said, I'll catch you on the next one.